My name is Vesna Karapetrova and we're here today at Canadian Macedonian Place to interview Mr. Uh, Walter Vlade Mihailov. And we're at the uh, Canadian Macedonian Historical Society premises. Today is April 3rd, 2019. Welcome, Vlade. Welcome to um, the Canadian Macedonian Historical Society uh, premises, and thank you for sharing your story for our archives. Let's begin with uh, telling us where were you born? I was born in Bitola, Macedonia, on February the 4th, 1950. Okay. And uh, can you tell us, um, Vlade, who were your parents and where they were born? Milan Mitkovsky was born in Grashnitsa mm -hmm. in 1922. Mm -hmm. My mother is Mara Gagovska, mm -hmm. born in Velushina. Macedonia in 1922. And how did they come about being in Bitola, that you were born in Bitola? Well, that's where the hospital is. Okay, and then <laughs> once you were born in Bitola, did you come back to one of the villages? Oh, yeah. Where did you live? Grashnitsa. Uh-huh. I don't know the name of the street, but the house number is 32. Okay, great. <laughs> And there are lots of Macedonians here from the village of Grashnitsa. Yeah, there are. Big, big community. Yeah. And um, can you tell us about your, your brothers and sisters? Do you have any and where they were born? My younger brother, he was born uh, in Bitola mm -hmm. in 1953, January. And, and what's his name? John. John, uh-huh. And how any... You got a brother and... Uh, that, that's it. That's it. One brother. Two. Okay. And uh, you lived with your parents in Grashnitsa? Oh, yes. Now, yes. Uh, and how about your grandparents? Uh, where were they born? My Baba Kala uh, Gorevska, before marriage. She was born in Grashnitsa. Mm -hmm. So was my dedo, Dimitri mm -hmm. Mitkovsky. He was born in Grashnitsa as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many children did they have? Four, but one passed away at 20. Mm -hmm. Okay, this were, they, they were all born in Grashnitsa? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. And who, so these are your aunts and uncles? Can you, yes. do you know their names? Yes, uh -huh. uh, I don't know my uncle's name because okay. he's already passed. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a Teta Magda. Mm -hmm and a Teta Vasilka. Okay. Magda lived in Canada. She, we brought, my Dedo brought her here. And my Teta Vasilka, she lived in Perth, Australia. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, Vlade, we have a very interesting um, document here. It's a um, Canadian citizenship document from 1932 from your Grandfather. Grandfather, Dimitria Mihailovich. Mihailovich. Okay, that's a lot of history there. Tell us about this uh, uh, this document. Yes, uh, this is his citizenship from 1932. He came here uh, in, 19, in 1926. Was his first or second trip here okay. to Canada. He was sent by uh, my great-grandfather to Canada after his mother passed. Mm -hmm. And he stayed here a few years, made some money, went back and got married, made some kids, mm -hmm. and he came back here to make some more money. So that was your grandfather? My grandfather. And all this time, your... Um, Baba? Your, your Baba was where? With us, in Grashnitsa. In, in Macedonia. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what happened to your grandfather eventually? Well, after 33, after 33 years, he brought us here. Okay. And we've been here ever since. So it, it's your grandfather who brought everybody here? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us when you were in Grashnitsa, what uh, your family, um, how your family made their living? We used to farm. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, plants did you farm? Wheat. 
mm -hmm. wheat and vegetables. Uh, there's still some uh, walnut trees on the property. You know, oh. the tomatoes, peppers. Uh -huh. My father used to run a vodensa. Oh, tell us about that. Vodensa, that's a... Um, flour mill. Flour mill, uh-huh. Water-powered. It's a water-powered windmill. They, they diverted the water from the river. Yes. And made the thing power. Mm-hmm. And we could have had electricity back in the 30s if they had just gotten a dynamo. Right. So we could have had, the village could have had hydro. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. No money. They didn't have enough, yes. Yeah. So everything was by hand. Yeah. Um, what language did you, uh, did you speak uh, in, when you were in Grajnica? Well, it wasn't English. <laughs> <laughs> Your English is very good, by the way. Yeah, well, I've been here 62 years almost. Right. Uh, but when you were in Grashnitsa, what language did you speak? Macedonian. And how about your aunts and uncles? Everybody spoke Macedonian. And your grandparents? Yeah. Yeah, Macedonian was the language. Macedonian was the language. Okay. Now, um, so how old were you when you left the village? I was heading for eight years old. Mm -hmm. uh, Vlade, what can you remember from your life uh, in Grajnica as an eight-year-old boy? Not too much. No. Did no. you go to school? For a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what language you spoke in the school? Macedonian. Macedonian. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And uh, how big was your village? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe uh, four or five, six hundred people, maybe. Right. Uh, do you remember uh, anything from uh, your village life as a, as a little boy at the time? No. No. Do you remember coming to Canada? I remember uh, being sick a lot on the boat. That, so you came on the boat? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. When you yeah. were in Grashnitsa, do you remember any friends? that you hung out with, or was it mostly relatives? Mostly relatives. Like your? Uh, my uh, cousins, Veloshina. Mm -hmm. I have some people in Grashnitsa that I still see. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Do, do you remember any games that you played no. as little kids? No. Yeah, you were very young. Um, so you went to school just for a little bit? A little bit. Were any of your old, uh, did your brother go? For no. He was younger than you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, do you remember any special occasions in the village, like uh, weddings, Easter? Kolede. Kolede for Christmas yeah. time? Yeah. Yeah, what did you do for Kolede? I had fires. Yeah. And roasted chestnuts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, uh, in terms of the occupation of your parents before they came here, you mentioned that they were? Farmers, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, uh, Vlade, can you tell us um, how your parents came to Canada? My, my mm -hmm. ditto brought us here. Uh -huh. And what was the reason that you think that they came? Well, for better life. Mm -hmm. There's no nothing back there. Right. Now, your father was the only one who came here, or that, does your father have other siblings that also came? No, he had a younger sister that came to Canada. We brought her here. After you came? Yeah. Okay, and what's her name? Magda. Magda, okay. Nikolevsky. Magda Nikolevsky. Um, so, uh, about your trip when you came to Canada, uh, you said you came on a boat? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Well, it wasn't a good experience, I can tell you that. No? What was it like? Uh, always throwing up. Oh. My baba, she didn't, she couldn't even go in a car. So she your had baba motion. had a hard time? Yeah, with motion sickness. Right. Was it a long trip? Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, the the boat landed in um, 
I think Halifax. Halifax, yeah. uh huh. Pier. Twenty one. Right. Okay. Uh, do you know from where you departed? From Paris. From Paris. Do you remember the name of the boat? I, I the only thing I can remember about the boat is it started with an S. Uh huh. Okay. But uh, other than that, no. Okay. Um, now, so your grandfather arranged for your parents to come here, right? Yeah, and my baba. And and your baba, yeah. yeah. What was your baba's name? Kala. Kala. Okay. Now, uh, so tell us a little bit more about uh, you know the reason that your parents came. Were they did they want to come? What was their their reasoning? Well, my my father wanted to see his father, and my baba wanted to see her husband. So we came here for, right. a, for a better life. How long was it that uh, that your father hadn't seen his father? Thirty-three years. And um, and what year did you come to Canada, Vlade? Nineteen fifty-seven, November yes. the twenty-second. November twenty-second. And your grandfather originally he came in to Canada. Mm -hmm. Nineteen. 26 was his second trip. And what was his first trip? His first trip would have been uh, around 1910. Mm -hmm. When he came the first time, what city did he come to? I don't know. Uh huh. And do, do you know what he did that first time when he came as a young boy? He went to school here. He did. Uh huh. Yes. And then did he start working? He, yes, he was mm -hmm. uh, part-time shining shoes. Shining one, shoes. At one time, then they, they went into the restaurant business. So the second time he came uh, was after he got married to your grandmother. Yes. Uh, how long did he stay there the second time? Okay. Where in Canada? No, in Grajnica. Let's see, between six, seven years, I would guess. Uh huh. Enough to make four kids and uh, come, come back, back here. Uh huh. And when he came back, he came back to Toronto. I believe so. Yeah. Yes. What kind of work did he do that second time as an adult? Uh, I think he went into the restaurant business. Mm hmm. He had some restaurants. Yes. Mm hmm. Do you know any of the names of the restaurants uh, or I, where they were? I don't know. Mm hmm. Right. So when you came. Um, uh, so, so he arranged uh, for you to come to Canada. What kind of documents and passports did you come with? Uh, Macedonian, Yugoslavian passports. So it was your, yes. Um, and so what nationality were you registered in those passports? I believe Macedonian. Okay. Um, so um, when you landed in Canada, you landed at uh, the um, uh, Halifax Pier 21. Yes. Um, was somebody waiting for you there? No. How did you get to Toronto? By train. Mm -hmm. and, and my uh, my Baba's brother mm -hmm. drove a car, a 1952 Chev. Yes. Yeah, he picked us up at Union Station with my grandfather. Okay, so uh, he picked you up, and uh, then how was your reunion with your grandfather? Was your grandfather there? Yeah. At, waiting with? With his brother-in-law. Okay, and what was your reunion like? Good, mm -hmm. good. That's a gentleman I had never met. Mm -hmm. Being your grandfather? Uh, being my grandfather, mm -hmm. and uh, so... It must have been a, quite a reunion for your grandmother too. She hadn't seen him in how many years? Thirty-three. Thirty-three years. So she just knew him as a young man, and then she meets him after thirty-two years. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, what happened? Where did you live when you first came here? Well, my grandfather already had a house here. Mm -hmm. We lived at Victoria Park in Saint Clair. Mm -hmm. That was with your grandfather. Yeah. And uh, tell us about your childhood. What did you, you were a seven, eight year old boy. What did you do? I uh, tried to learn English mm -hmm. fast. And you know, go on and play and skating and all that stuff. Right. What school did you go to when you first came to Canada? 
uh, George Webster uh -huh. in East York. East York. And how long were you at George Webster? Uh, not long. Not long at all. Because? Of the language. Right? Because uh, I was here, what, a month? Yes. And tossed into school mm -hmm. with no English at all. And the teacher thought I was offside because I couldn't speak English. There were no English uh, ESL classes at that time? I don't believe so. No. no. So what happened? Well, my grandfather had a restaurant on Dawes Road at the time. Mm -hmm. And the teacher went to him. He says, how come this kid can't speak English? He says, why don't you talk to him in Macedonia and see how it kind of uh, talk you can get out of him. Yes. <laughs> yeah, set her straight. Right. And then what happened? Um, I went to a different school. I started to learn English. and. Like an ESL school? Is, yeah. No, no. And what was that school? The Secord. Secord, C yeah. Secord Public School. Okay, so you moved to, your family no, moved or you just, no, this, how just, was it that you decided to go to Secord? No, I didn't get the decision. They just placed me there. Okay. From one school to the next. Right. And did you get more help there with your English? A little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what, uh, how many years were you at Secord? Two, mm -hmm. three, and okay. I went to uh, Selwyn Public School. Salmon? Selwyn. Selwyn, uh-huh. It's off of uh, St. Clair. Okay. Well, it's just right up the street. Right. And uh, what grades did you do there? Up to uh, six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you continued on? Yes. Mm -hmm. I went to a vocational school. Okay. I took machine shop, but I never went into it. Okay. And in the seventies, I went back. To, I went to George Brown and picked up oil oil burner course and a gas burner course and then some air conditioning. Yes. And the rest is history. Now I'm retired. Right. Okay. So at George Brown, you learned another trade. Yeah, two trades, three. Three, okay. And uh, what did you end up afterwards? As an oil burner and gas fitter. Uh huh. Where did you work? I worked on my own and uh, I worked for a few SO contractors. So you had your own business? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you employ other people? No. No. I, I, uh, if I needed a helper, I, I, Traded hours mm -hmm. with another mechanic. Right. You know, right. I help him on his job. He helps me on my. Mm hmm And uh, what was the name of your business? Eagle Home Comfort. Eagle. Mm -hmm. Like the bird. Like eagle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so uh, then, um, that's what you did to make a living all the time in Canada. Yeah, do you know, can, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, your childhood? You mentioned uh, skating. How did you get introduced to that? And hockey? The hockey with the, my uh, Canadian friends. Okay. Yeah, because at that time in the 50s, there wasn't that many Macedonians here. So your friends were mostly Canadian? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I still talk to them today. Yes. So you played hockey and... Yeah. Yeah, and, and any other interest that you developed? Baseball. I like baseball. Mm -hmm. I was good at it. Okay, baseball, great. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that your when you that your grandfather had a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Did he have the restaurant when you came here? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember where it was? On Dawes Road. Dawes Road. And do you know the name? It was Town Lunch. Now it's Duffy's. Oh, it's still there. The building's still there. There's another business inside of it. Uh huh. But it was called Town Lunch when your yeah. grandfather had yeah. it. Yeah. Do you remember going there and helping or anything like that? Yeah. Used to peel potatoes. Mm hmm. Was that while you were going to school? Yeah. That was like a part time job. Yeah. And when I was in my uh, <coughs> early teens, I worked for a store next door to the restaurant. Yes, what did you do there? 
I ran the store. Oh. 13, 14. Really? What kind of like, store was it? It was uh, uh, Uplands Dairy, which is close to a Becker's store style. Okay. Sold everyone. So you ran the store basically? Yeah. Okay, how about your parents, your, your father and mother? What kind of work did they do when you came to Canada? Uh, they were both worked in the restaurants. With your, with your grandfather? No, no. My dad, he worked for, uh, at that time, for Golden Mile Restaurant. Y yes. Okay, and then my mother worked across the street at Watts. Right. At Victoria Park yeah, and... Eglinton. Eglinton area. Yeah. Okay. And um, did your parents go to school when they came to Canada no. at all? No? no? How do you think they learned their English? I don't know, from work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just, okay. Uh, being around other people. Being, uh-huh. And what about uh, your, your leisure life when you didn't go to uh, school and work? Um, did, did, were you involved, like, did you go to church? Mm, not that much. Mm -hmm. What church? Uh, would, we didn't would have a church back then. Right. When it, you know, like we didn't get a church until what sixty four. Mm -hmm. Did you belong or your parents to any other organization before the church? Uh, my parents probably did. Uh huh. Do you remember what it might have been? I don't. Some Macedonian village organization. Probably. Yeah. Did Grashnitsa have uh, uh, a village? Group. I think so. Yes, even back then, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then, what are your memories of the church and how it um, started to get built? It was good. We were finally uh, being recognized and given our own church mm -hmm. without going to a Serbian or a Bulgarian, mm -hmm. which we did a long time ago. And uh, Vlade, do you remember, what are your memories of uh, St. Clement when it was first uh, being built? Do you remember? It looked good. Uh-huh. It looked like we were moving in the right direction. Right. Yeah. Do you remember about any uh, picnics that yes. you went to maybe even before the church was built? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. What picnics do you remember? Um, gee. That's a long, long time. Ago. Linden, were, were there mostly Linden yeah, picnics? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you remember getting there? With yeah. how did you get there? Uh, by car. Mostly by car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With all your friends and relatives. My father uh, got his driver's license in 1965. Mm hmm. And he bought a car. Okay. Yeah. And that was a big trip to get to the Linden. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm. Yeah, I can't remember where where they were at that time, but they're out of Toronto, that's for sure. Out towards the east, mostly. Yes. <coughs> like in Ajax. Near Ajax, in that in that area. Yeah. yeah, I know there was a Makedonsko Selo at one point where they had a lot of picnics. Yeah, there was one place that had a a river running through it. Yes. Like a hydro field or something. And people used to put their lawn chairs in the water in the river and just sit there. Uh huh. <laughs> Keep cool. <laughs> right. Do, do you remember, uh, Vlade, any dancing groups? Were you involved in anything? Uh, any Macedonian groups as you were growing up? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, can you um, then, when you were. Um, when you were growing up as a teenager, do you remember having like get getting together with Macedonians, going to dances? No. Not too much. No. Mm -hmm. no, I mostly hung around with the Canadian crowd. Yes. Well, okay. You know, there's more of them. Mm -hmm. Like one of my friends is his mother was, uh, I think. Sixth generation Canadian, mm -hmm. so they've been here a long time. Right. Okay. Um, now, uh, Vlade, as you were getting older, uh, and uh, and you you were um, you met your wife. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, 
how you met her? How I met the missus. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us her name. Lydia. Lydia, huh? Yeah. Uh, I had some relatives in Bitola that were also her relatives. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, her Baba, her her Baba's uh, her Baba's cousin was m my Baba's uh, youngest sister's husband. Mm -hmm. Okay, we were introduced. You were introduced uh, in Bitola. In Bitola. Mm -hmm. And here we are, 32 years later. Okay. Now, did you decide to go to Bitola, like for a holiday, or was this going to no, be a no, reason? For, for a holiday. Uh huh. Well, did you go by yourself? Yeah. The year before, I'd gone back with my father. Uh huh. And he took me back and showed me the whole thing. Tell us about that trip. Where did you go? Bitola. Uh huh. Bitola. What What year was that, Vlade? Your first time? Eighty-five. 85. 1985. And where did your father take you? To Bitola, to a relative's <coughs> house, and uh -huh. uh, then we went all over Macedonia. Did, did, she, did he show you Grajnica where you were born? Oh, yeah. Yes? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the first place we went. That's the first. Now, did you still have some relatives there? In Grajnica? Yes. No. No? What was the village there, like? What did it look like? Oh, uh, she. Uh huh. Go ahead. The village, what it looked like. Uh huh. It was a good village. Uh huh. Lots of hills, the mountain in the backdrop, and if you go up to the top of the mountain and you look down the other side, you can see that border fence. And the border fence was. To uh, what they want to call now Southern Macedonia. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can see the the border. Yeah. Mm hmm. A couple of years ago, we were in uh, Dragos. Dragos. Next village. And and they have uh, no fence there. Just a rock. Mm -hmm. There's up by the a monastery in Dragos. Mm -hmm. We we had lunch with my brother-in-law and his friends. We had a good day there. Mm -hmm. The police showed up looking for uh, people that are crossing the border mm -hmm. and there wasn't any that day mm -hmm. yeah it was all good mm -hmm. and uh, getting back to how you met your wife tell us about that first meeting well I met her I saw her at a uh, she worked at Techni Metal a store and uh, saw what I liked and here we are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how about where she's from and her family She's from Bitola. She's born in Bitola. Mm -hmm. And her family? Is from Bitola. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And her, her grandfather is originally, her mother's father is originally from Grajnica. Grajnica. Do you know their names? I don't. Her, her, her parents' names? I, I know her father's name. Yes. George. Uh-huh. Lazarevsky. Oh, George Lazarevsky and... I don't know the mother's name. Mm-hmm. And they, they have roots from Grajnica. Her mother. The mother was, yeah. was from Grajnica. The mother and the grandfather. Mm -hmm. They're from Grajnica. And then uh, how did you, where, where did you um, get married and sign papers and made we it We got illegal? married at uh, City Hall. In Macedonia? In Bitola, yeah. In Bitola, uh -huh. yeah. And we had a, a small gathering after. My uh, my Baba's sister was there. So, and her, what is her name? Huh? What is her name? Uh, uh, it's your Baba Ka Kala's Kala's sister. sister. Okay, yeah. uh huh. The youngest one. But, uh, because your Baba was here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it can't skips me the name right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, after you had the gathering, did uh, did you um, stay there longer, or did you come back to Canada together? No, I stayed uh, from September 
till about November. Then I came here, went in downtown, filled out all the paperwork, and about two, three weeks later, I went back to Macedonia. Mm -hmm. You went back. I went back. Okay. And so, sometime in February, we got the paper that she could come. So February the twelfth, we were landed in Toronto. So you came together. Yeah. And how did you come with a airplane? Airplane. Mm -hmm. Airplane. No sickness. No sickness. <laughs> it was a shorter trip, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So. That's good. So when you came to Canada, Where? it was your wife's first time. Yeah. Where did you settle? How did you uh, start well, your life? Well, we moved in with my parents. This was at. Uh, in Scarborough. Okay, and um, uh, how about your children? Tell us how many children you have. I have two. Mm -hmm. One, oh, uh, Jimmy, he's 30, heading for 31, uh, married, no children. Mm -hmm. They have their own house. Uh, I help them with their water tank and move their furnace for them, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Right. And Mikey, he's, uh, he's 28, 20, no, he's, he's heading for 29, mm -hmm. so he's married, bought his own house, they're, they're living in it now. Mm -hmm. So just from uh, four people in the house, now we're just two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, uh, tell us about uh, Vlade, your, um, as the Macedonian church got built, what was your involvement in the community? You remember going to church and uh, other functions? I went to church rarely. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, my, my mom and dad went once in a while. Mm hmm. It's the same as Baba. Yeah. And that was at St. Clement. St. Clement. Mm -hmm. Okay. And being in Canada, Vlade, uh, are you still uh, working or are you retired now? Retired. Mm -hmm. yeah. And can you tell us, Vlade, what you're most proud of being in Canada and having grown up here? The freedom that we have here. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. It, it's at a price, but it's a lot safer than it is on other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Right. Now, um, Vlade, w what advice would you have for the um, younger generations of, uh, of Macedonians who, who are here in Canada? What advice would I have for them? Yeah. Find out your roots right to the Koran. Yeah. Can you say what you say and what English? Yeah, we have families here that are Macedonian and one of the brothers decides he wants to be a Greek. How did that happen? I don't know. This is from one of your families? No, no, not my family, no. other family. Example, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just how can uh, a son change his father's nationality? Mm -hmm. He can't. Right, you know, yeah. Once you're, once you're born a Macedonian, you're always a Macedonian. So most of these are the ones, uh, unfortunately, who are born in Macedonia, which is dominated by Greece now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and those people have been the assimilated and forced to say they're Greek. Oh, yeah, yeah, suppressed. Very much so, yes, yeah. that's right. Um, Vlade, when you were here, as you were getting your, you, your um, occupation started in your business, you were quite busy, but did you, did you belong to any of the Macedonian organizations? No. I know no. Grajnica has a... Uh, has a big, um, uh, big group. Did you ever go to their uh, picnics or uh, dances? Yeah, we used to go to uh, Svetiatanas every year. And that happens in January, last uh, Saturday in January used to be. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's a big event for all the Grashnitsa yeah, people yeah. who are here. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, and um, is, did we forget anything that you'd like to add uh, for that you think is important for this interview? Well, I think all the young kids coming up, they should learn their dancing and all their cultural stuff but always get a good education so we can promote Macedonia mm -hmm. through the young. Right. Now you've got two young um, Macedonians, your, your, uh, your sons, and they're both married and uh, to them and to all the other younger uh, generation of Macedonians, what would you like to tell them? Get a good education. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on your school. Why do you think a good education is so important here in Canada for young Macedonians? Uh, why? Because mm -hmm. like the 60s and the 70s, you could quit one job and have another job by the afternoon. Today, you, you can't do that. So everything is based around an education. My two sons, every so often at their job at the bank, they have to do some upgrading skills. And you like it or not, you have to do them. So get all the schooling you can. Absolutely. And uh, Vlade, there have been a lot of um, events happening in Macedonia, some very unfortunate events and problems uh, about uh, what's happening in Macedonia today. Have you been following? A little bit. Yeah? How, can you tell us a little about how you feel what's going on? Well, it's just, uh, it's a bunch of outside people that want to come inside and control the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the outside people are? Greece, Serbia, the United States, Britain, mm -hmm. Russia. Right. Serbia. And what is it that you think that we should be doing? Well, all the other countries don't want Macedonia to have any history. Mm -hmm. Like Greece is trying to steal history. History has to be lived. Can't steal it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this is what has happened today? This is what's happening today. Mm -hmm. With the name change? With the name change and uh, with all that. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Greece is so uh, insistent on, on Macedonia to change the name? Why? Yeah. They want to control. Control the history mm -hmm. and... Control the history, the people that are in the southern part. Mm -hmm. They're suppressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in the northern part, something that we don't hear, northern Greece, yeah. tell us about what you know of your experience of people there. Northern Greece? Yeah. They're suppressed people. They're Macedonians. They're Macedonians, but they're, uh, they can't have any church service in Macedonian or any uh, meeting in Macedonian or none of that. They're suppressed. And Greece is supposed to be in Europe. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be a democracy. Mm -hmm. Supposed to be. That's right. But right there, there is... There's no democracy mm -hmm. when you're trying to suppress another, uh, another people. Mm -hmm. And none of this has been in the news, uh, you know, in the front pages, has it? No. No, no. They, they want that sort of stuff out of the news. They don't want you to... Uh, find out the truth. Mm -hmm. you know, just like our boy here, you don't want to talk about us and that Lavalin. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to... St yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vlade, uh, as, as we know, the situation in Macedonia has been, has been quite uh, problematic and unfortunate lately with Macedonia having to uh, this new name being imposed. What do you hope for the future? What do I hope for the future? For Macedonia. Hey, what do I hope for the future? 
I hope it all becomes like one. You know, that's the way God planned it. That's the way he wants it to be, one. Well, Vlade, that is uh, a very uh, dramatic and uh, pointful way of ending our interview. I thank you very much for uh, coming here at the premises of the Canadian Macedonian Historical uh, Society. And uh, I thank you for sharing your story and your knowledge about uh, your Macedonian heritage and giving this information to the young generation because this interview is going to be online and your grandchildren one day will be able to watch it and know more about their Macedonian roots. So thank you very much. Thank you.